frustrated, some very concerned about the way forward because of what's been said in the press. And we just believe that we need to come together in Gauteng, in Tswane, in Pretoria, and have its time number three. The first one we had was in Bloemfontein, and we saw over a million people there. That is a fact. The second one we had was in the most dangerous place in South Africa, in Mitchell's Plain, where they said no one would come. We had the biggest crowd in the history of the Western province. That same day, the Wallabies were playing cricket against the Proteas, and the Queensland Reds were playing rugby against the Stormers. And we had 165,000 people plus. I want to say something to you, ladies and gentlemen. I believe that this its time is going to be the biggest event that this country has ever seen. And I'm talking, obviously, faith. The time is right, the season is right, and I want to say something else to you, and you can put this in the newspaper. I really didn't want to do this job. But you know, the Holy Spirit, sometimes they call him the hound from heaven. I don't think that's a very nice term, but it's a fact. He, when he gives you, when he's on your case, he does not let up until you respond. I was on leave in June, and he just he kept saying, one more, one more. And I'm saying, I don't really want to do this. The leaders in our nation will back this event. Because over 80, write it down, over 80% of this country believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Over 80%. That's a fact. Okay? My heart is to see, and I'm not going to stipulate numbers this time. I did for Bloomington. I said a million people. We've got more than a million people. I believe that we are going to have in excess of what we had in Bloomington. I would not be a bit surprised if we saw 2 million people. And we will be ready for them, right? I've got many that are not in because they are in the construction business. All I do is shut my mouth off and then they have to make it happen. But it is going to happen. And it's going to be amazing. And this is very important as well. There will be no tickets to buy and there will be no collection taken. Write that in your newspaper, please. It is for free, and contrary to what people think I am, a multi-millionaire, I just wish you could come and have a cup of tea in my house one day, and you might change your mind, okay? Right? We're doing this by faith, from the beginning to the end. But you know, faith is contagious, and faith breeds faith. So when you step out in faith and God honors you, you take the next step. If you'd asked me to do this 20 years ago, I would never have even attempted it. But I know in my spirit that this is going to happen. And I want to thank God for the opportunity that He's given us in South Africa. I don't think there's another nation in the world, uh, Janine, that would uh, come and sit here, Mena. This, this man, by the way, and his dad and his partner flew us from Peter Marisburg here in a private plane. No, it wasn't my plane and it wasn't a jet, okay? <laughs> Not yet. Maybe after this, it's time I'll get a jet, eh? You've got to write something. And, um, but, 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 ser but seriously, folks, seriously, you can see I'm really pumped up this morning. I'm so excited. You know, God has blessed me. I've been preaching the gospel for over 40 years. 40 years, write it down. I've been all over the world. I've been to Nashville, Tennessee. I've been where they do all the Grammy Awards. Three times I've been there. Okay? And they're talking about the Dallas Cowboy Stadium for next year. That's right, in Texas. But that pales into insignificance when I think of what we're going to do on the 27th of October this year in Pretoria, Tswane. It, we're going to have a facility there that will take all comers and as many as will come. And they are going to come. You know why? Because there's no other answer. I want to read something to you from uh, Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln said this about the power of prayer. Remember, this is, I write this down, madam. This is not an ev evangelistic outreach. This is a prayer meeting. This is not something that uh, we organize. This is something that God organized for the nation. This is not a Gauteng thing. This is a South African thing. One man has already told me, two trains, write it down, coming from Cape Town, two trains already. This is going to be huge because everybody is sitting and saying, what is going to happen next? Everybody.
from the president downwards. Okay? Listen to what Abraham Lincoln said. I thought this was so beautiful. Abraham Lincoln abolished the slave trade, remember? And he said, I have many times been driven to my knees by the utter conviction that I had nowhere else to go. I'll say that again, just for the farmers sitting here. I have many times been driven to my knees by the utter conviction that I had nowhere else to go. Ladies and gentlemen, we have been driven to our knees because we have nowhere else to go. And that's not coming from white people. It's not coming from black people. It's coming from everybody. And people are wanting answers. And the only answer is when we pray. And when we pray, God answers prayers. Now, come on. I want to ask you a question. How many of you had the privilege of being at Bloemfontein? Can I see a show of hands? Okay, there was a few of you. What happened after that prayer meeting? Okay. Well, the first thing is we had a change in government. Write that down. That was the first thing. Second thing, when this economy of ours had been trashed by the International Economic Board, the RAND strengthened. Okay. When corruption was running rife, the Guptas and all the rest of them were dealt with. This, this is another coincidence, you know, just after the prayer meeting, right? They started singing hymns and praying in Parliament, right? What else happened? Well, the, the nuclear power station that was going to be built, which was going to cripple the country, was shelved as unconstitutional. These are not coincidences, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm not talking, we wrote a book, Kum Books has written a book about its time about miracles of marriages that were restored, of children that were healed in the meetings. We didn't pray for anybody. The presence of God was so strong there. Remember the whirlwind that took up blankets and umbrellas and they never came back. 450,000 motor cars were parked. It was deemed impossible. My son is a, is a buffer when it comes to stats. He said, Dad, we're going to have to park 16 cars a minute. It's not going to happen. It happened. The, the airports were closed down. We couldn't take any more airplanes. Now that was Bloemfontein. What about uh, Mitchell's Plain? Mitchell's Plain, the most dangerous place in South Africa. Maybe the continent. They said no one will come. 165,000 people came. Remember the rain. Come on, folks. Come on, man. Just smile a bit. Right? The, the driest city in the world. Where people were panicking and lining up at supermarkets and buying water because they didn't want to die of thirst. I mean, that's how ridiculous it sounds now. So we went there. What did we do? The poorest of the poor. We got on our knees in the sand dunes and we prayed. <coughs> and what happened, sir? What happened, madam? It's raining. It's raining. Oh, yeah, but it always rains there in the winter. No, it didn't rain for three years in the winter. It's raining now. And you can say what you like. I know that God answers prayer. I also live in this country. I've got beautiful children. I've got beautiful, I've got 11 grandchildren. I've got five children that are married. Okay? I've got spiritual children. I've got three, uh, 300 spiritual sons. I've got 27 adopted children, black children. I'm not going anywhere. I'm staying in this country. And I'm not going to sit on my <laughs> behind and do nothing. So all I'm doing is I'm being obedient. We're blowing the trumpet. We're calling the people to this meeting. And I hope and pray that you'll be there. Because if we don't, and you can print it, then I think this country's got no more hope. If we don't respond to this call by God, then we can't complain again. Where were you, Lord? The Lord said, I was there waiting for you, but you just didn't come. You're too busy because you've got a squash mat match on and you're playing a game of rugby. Folks, this is critical. Absolutely critical. Now, I don't know who you are, where you come from, but I want to thank you for coming here this morning. And I think I need to maybe take a few questions and answers. I don't want to talk too long, but I want to tell you I wouldn't be here if I didn't believe in this move of God. Why should I be here? Hey, I'm not trying to build a church, I'm not trying to build a denomination. Think about it, son. Ask yourself a question. Why am I here? What is in it for me? Nothing. Everything is in it for me. It's called obedience. 
And when you start to obey the word of God, then you see doors start opening and miracles start taking place. Like you cannot believe. There's not another country in the world that would, would probably back an, an initiative like what's happening in our country. The Americans came over and they said to me, how is it that you can still have mighty men conferences from all the different denominations, from Roman Catholic right across to ultra Pentecostal? They cannot understand how the men are still together. You see, they had promise keepers. They had, um, what was the other one? Full gospels. Full gospels business, business was finished. That's all finished. Mighty men is growing. Next week, I'm going to Namibia for the first one. Last week, I was in Zambia for the first one. The week before that, I was in Botswana. Why is that? Because all these countries are wanting to see what's going to happen in this nation. Because whatever happens in this nation is going to impact them. Sometimes I think they're more concerned than what we are. Our president, Sir Ramaphosa, I know him. He said in the newspapers, and maybe you can confirm that, he said that the, the only solution for this country is 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. That's what they told me. He said, if my people, who is that? Who is that? That is the Christians. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. I'm on my knees. Can you see that? And seek my face. And turn from their wicked ways. The violence in this country has got to stop. It's got to stop. The black people in this country are getting violated more than anybody else. You just never hear about it. Humble themselves and pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Then the Lord says, I will heal from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal South Africa. Write it down, please. That's what the president said. So what are we going to do? You might say, Uncle Angus, but, um, you know, we're praying. We're all praying in our churches. We're praying at home. But God is talking. You excited, eh? I can see that. God is talking about corporate prayer. Corporate prayer. Write it down. Corporate prayer. What is corporate prayer? Come on, but some. That's only Afrikaans I know. <laughs> Apart from praise the hearer and first bait. That's all. <laughs> we need corporate prayer. And sometimes it takes a businessman or an old farmer or somebody to do it. Because if a minister does it, then all the other denominations say, no, he's trying to feather his own nest. You don't know what denomination I belong to, and I'm not telling you. <laughs> but I do belong to a church. And I go to church every Sunday. And I am going to vote. Write it down. Because everybody has got to vote. I said, everybody has got to vote. Because it's in the Bible. But I don't have to tell you who I'm voting for. Okay? And some political parties have tried to get hold of me and try and sway me. Come and talk it out. I said, no. Because, and now I'm going to get into trouble. But what the heck? I'm always in trouble. <laughs> I believe there's Christians in every party. Yes, I do. Okay? I'll just leave it there. This is not about a political party. It's not, a, it's not, write it down, it's not a political meeting. It is a Christian meeting. Now the first question you're going to ask me, what about the other faiths? What about the Muslims? What about the Hindus? They're welcome. And by the way, they do phone me on a regular occasion and say, well, what you're doing is fantastic. Because we also want peace in the country. But one thing you must write down, it is a Christian meeting. And we will be praying to the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the weatherman. Okay? He is the weatherman. You don't believe me? Ask the people in Cape Town. Okay? I said, I'm not going back <laughs> to ask the Lord to stop the rain. I got a lovely photograph the other day, some guy, I think it was a Germany, paddling down the street in his canoe. I told him that was going to happen. But anyway, they didn't believe me. But anyway, I'm not going back. The Lord said, I am your vindicator. I want to say to you folks, I don't think we've had one hand harvest, Andy. I don't think we've had Dion, Mac. I don't think we've had one negative report about this event. It's absolutely incredible. With uh, Mitchell's plane, they, they literally crucified me on Facebook. It's okay. It's called free advertising. <laughs> but it's a bit painful sometimes, especially when it's live. And Bloomington, well, we'll wait to see because we've never ever seen a prayer meeting with a million people anywhere in the world. I believe that is a record. Write it down. 
the first Christian, I said Christian, prayer meeting in the world with more than a million people. And they came together in less than six weeks. Listen, we were eight weeks before this event. And I believe, and you tell me afterwards whether I'm wrong, I believe we're going to have a crowd that will supersede Bloomfontein. Now, it's not about numbers, but it's about people. People need help. Everywhere we go, we see people in depression. Depression, write it down. Fear, anxiety, stress. Breaks my heart when I hear about young people that want to leave our country. It's the most beautiful country in the world. What do we have to do? We have to pray. And we have to pray without ceasing. I think that's in, uh, what's that, 2, two Thessalonians <coughs> chapter 5, verse 17. We have to pray. Now we come in, and we're going to have a prayer meeting. And what's going to happen after that? Well, that's up to the churches, isn't it? But I'm going back to the farm. That's where I'm going. And I'm going to hear what God's got for me next. So are there any questions? And if I can't, if I cannot answer them, I've got many here that will do it. All right? But I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, you cannot... Are you listening, Jenny? Because you, you asked me some very pertinent questions on, on, on the radio a while back. Right? And I answered them, didn't I? And God's answered the rest. I was accused of all kinds of things. Tin God, who the hang does he think he is, his followers. I've got no followers. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. Okay? I'm not a tin God. I'm just a representative of Jesus Christ. And when you speak the truth, I don't know why. You see, I don't have to be controversial, ladies and gentlemen. I said I don't have to be controversial. This book is controversial. See? All I'm going to do is tell them what the book says. What does the book say, sir? The book says, in John 14, 6, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no one's coming to the Father but by me. That's controversial. What about the other faiths? I don't know. As we say in Zulu, Angaz. Go to Angaz, Ujesu. Ujesu, Nkulukulu Ami. Yeah. You see, you see, some of us know this, this book, but we've never met the author. Write that down. I know the author. I know the author. I might not know the book as well as some of you, but I know the author. He has never failed me. And he's not going to fail us this time. But we need your participation. And I'm talking to the media, and we need some real support this time. Please. Please. Okay? Because if you've got another game plan, maybe you should tell us what it is. I don't have another game plan. This is the only game plan. See my agricultural manual? Can you read that, my girl? This is the book. This is the book that told me to come to Gauteng. This is the book that said Swani is going to have a meeting, a prayer meeting that's going to shake the continent of Africa. My son might go into details. He hasn't given me all the details because he says I can't keep a secret. <laughs> so he won't tell me. That's the honest truth. He will not tell me. <laughs> because he knows I'll tell Janine and then she'll tell everybody. <laughs> I'll be waiting for you tomorrow morning, Janine. Tomorrow morning. I want some good stuff, eh? <laughs> She's looking very sheepish here. I really love her. She's a wonderful girl. I had a dream. Write it down. A vision, a dream. You waited a long time, now I'm giving you a money's worth, man. I'm not even charging you. I'm giving you this for free. <laughs> so you can sell your newspapers. So I had a vision. Okay, Lord, where are we going to have this? Because this is going to be big. I, I knew that. It's going to be massive. Okay? It's going to be the biggest one yet. But you listen to me. I'm telling you, you'll see. So, the Lord gave me a picture of an airfield. Not an airport. Not an aerodrome. An airfield. That's not normal English. I don't normally talk about an airfield. Okay? So, Andy came up with his wife. To leave her with her, her mom and dad because her dad is having a big op operation. He's back and he's, he's fine. It's 100%. And he left the next day. He's a farmer, by the way. He farms strawberries. Okay? Yeah. Strawberries and kiwi fruit. He's got a big, big labor force. The next morning, he was going to get in his bucky. Early in the morning, drive back to the farm. The Holy Spirit laid upon his heart, go and find the, the venue. That's all I told him. Airfield. Very close to Pretoria. And the story is miraculous. I don't have time to tell you. But he's found the airfield. That's right. He went to all the other airports. Wasn't them? Four of them. No. Airfield. 
Went out, met a lady, standing there, nice lady. He said to her, is this your place? She said, yeah, well, it's my boss's place. He had a look. He said, how many hectares? 1,000 hectares. Write that down. You must get the facts this time. I never used to do this. I didn't do it now. 1,000 hectares is 2,500 acres for the townies. It's by a through it. How is that, Afrikaans? Okay. So when he got there, it had already been mowed. Number ten, you had to do all that, yeah? Bale, that means you put the grass into bales, and the bales removed. <coughs> it was waiting. So Andy said, how much? She picked up the phone, told her boss what was going to happen. He said, it's for free. Okay. <coughs> I know newspaper reporters don't normally clap, but can you can we just have a clap? <laughs> Thank you. Very kind of you. Thank you. Why aren't you clapping? <laughs> clap, man. <laughs> He's the pilot. If I don't shut up, I'll be walking up. <laughs> I want to tell you, never before in my life. Hey Andy, how does have we had such favor from the public? It's like everybody's waiting, write it down. Everybody is waiting to see what's going to happen. What is Jesus going to do in South Africa? And this is going to spread right through the continent of Africa. I've just come back from Zambia. They're all asking about it. Don't bite your fingernails. I'm, just got, I'm going to Namibia next week. I've just been to Botswana. Folks, we've got to start watching what we say. And I want to say to the newspaper people, because I really do love you. I, re I mean it. I really love you, all of you. Be careful what you write. Be careful what you say. Because sometimes there's a young farmer and his wife <coughs> on a farm in the bush and just that one negative word just breaks the camel's back. Maybe there's a young family in Soweto or um, what's the name of that big place on the way out of, on the left hand side? Hamanskar. Just waiting for an opportunity. You know? An opportunity for a job. An opportunity for my children to go to university. And you speak about this, this country's going to the dogs and this country's got no hope. And it just breaks his back. I'm for the young people. I love young people, by the way. The age group I work with mainly of men of 40 years old. That's a, that's a fact. That's why I look so young. <laughs> but I want to say to you that I believe that this is our last chance. Because next year we've got the elections. Write it down. And people need to know who they're going to vote for. And I believe that this country has got an opportunity like never before. I really believe it. But we need to act. You see, prayer is a doing word. Prayer is not talking. It's action. Don't tell God you love Him. Show Him you love Him by coming here. I've told the people in Cape Town, we want to see you here. The people in Blue Britain, they're coming here. We're going to see something we've never seen before. Any questions? Don't all rush. <laughs> Where is the APU? Pardon? What is the Ask him. I don't know where it is. You won't tell me. <laughs> but it's a, a stone's throw from, the, from, from Pretoria. You're going to hear about it because he doesn't want... Oops, sorry. He doesn't want some people jumping the gun. You won't tell anything about it. <laughs> well, that's a Christian. He's a Christian. Yeah. <laughs> And if I may, just from a practical point of view, we've learned so much from Bloemfontein and from Cape Town, and that's why I think I don't even know where the place is. It's um, because um, there will be enough parking areas around the area, and maybe, and if you can just explain a bit more. I think it's um, many of you. Uh, I think it's um, would not think it is for logistical reasons, and uh, we we can't we can't say where the venue is going to be because people with modern mean? day technology, especially. What <laughs> modern day technology you can type in the coordinates and then everyone will, will go to the place and then we'll, we'll gridlock. So we part of part of the strategy is we just need to find the parking areas, get the people to come to the different parking areas, and there'll be a little bit of walking to to the venue because over that extent, 800 to 1,000 hectares, it's a, it's a big area, and uh, we've got to try and get the people in. And what we've learned from from Bloemfontein is is that uh, you can't have a single focus point for everybody to to go to so that's that's why uh, but we, we will be putting it on the website the, the directions to where you need to go so if you're coming from
KZN, for example, you follow the black route. For example, you're coming from the Cape, you follow the red route. From Pretoria, follow the blue route. If you're from the north, follow the green route, whatever the case is, and get to your, your parking area. Follow the, the signage and the marshals, and uh, they'll, they'll get you there. So it's, it's a challenge, quite a challenge, uh, just to get all the cars off the road. Um, to the was 16 cars a second that we have to get the, off the road. And uh, over six hours this, this time, we estimate that it'll be a bit more. Um, so a lot more. A lot more. <laughs> and um, yeah, so we've, we've got to um, just try and manage that. But we also know that, that the Lord has, he's the master design. He's gone before us already. He knows what's got to happen. Uh, we've just got to listen. And, that's, all. Uh, that's what we're saying to our team. Just listen to what the Lord is wanting to tell you because he's, he's a master architect. He's going to put it together and uh, we've, we've just got to execute his plan. So we're not fearful. Uh, what Dad has said, we've, we've already found incredible favor. Uh, it's amazing how <coughs> the country wants to support and really get behind this. And this is, Dad said it already, it's not a Shalom initiative. Uh, this is this is a God initiative. This is what God wants to do in this country, and we're privileged to be a part of what God wants to do in this country. Amen. Can I just add, thanks, Andy. Can I just add on quickly, because you're going to ask me just now, what is the the scripture that God has laid on our hearts for this event? And this is very important, because without that scripture, we're just chasing the wind. Okay, so it'll be found in the Gospel of Mark. <coughs> Chapter 14 and verse 38. Mark 14, 38. Where the Lord Jesus said to the disciples, Watch and pray. See, that's what Andy touched on just now. Watch and pray. What does watch mean? It means observe. It means open your ears. It means be attentive. Watch and pray. Then it goes on. And the Lord says, Lest you fall into temptation. Because the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. See, when you look through carnal eyes, through worldly eyes, all you see around us is devastation. Okay, you see there's no hope. You see everything's coming apart. There's farmers saying, they, no one's going to take my farm, and we're going to have the last stand. You're talking civil war. You're talking all that type of stuff. And it's not going to happen, because God's going to intervene. Watch and pray, lest you fall into temptation, because the spirit is willing, okay, but the flesh is weak. When you look with your carnal eyes, you see everything falling apart. But what, why did Jesus say that? See, he said that to, to his three key disciples, Peter, James, and John. That's what he said. And he asked them to, to keep awake. Are you awake? Mm -hmm. Keep awake. Three times, he said. And three times he felt, found them sleeping. And the third time he woke them up, he said, it's too late. He said, the enemy's here. And the Bible says in that ver last verse, probably, for me, probably the saddest verse in the Bible, and that's in, in, in Mark chapter 14, verse, I think it's verse 50, and they all forsook him and fled. I, I, I want to just close from my side with this. We cannot afford to let this opportunity go past us. I look at young ladies here. Do you have children? Not yet. Do you have children? Eh? Wouldn't, it, wouldn't it be a travesty for you, madam, if one day when your children grow up and they say, Mom, did you have an opportunity to come together with the rest of the people in South Africa, black, white, colored Indian, and pray? And you'll have to say, yes, I did. And then your child will say, did you go? And you'll say, no, I, you know, I had a tennis match on, or I had a, a 21st birthday party, <coughs> or whatever. How are you going to live with that? Why didn't you, Mom? That's why we're in a mess now, because you didn't obey what God is calling you. We need to understand that we have an obligation, all of us, especially the newspaper people and the, and, and the media. You have an obligation to talk life and not death. Okay? You say, but when you talk life and positive things, Angus, it doesn't sell newspapers. You'll be surprised. People are so sick and tired of the negativity in this world, never mind this country. They want something that they can hang on to. Now we're going to give them something and it's going to happen on the 22nd of October this year. And it's for free. 
All you have to do is come and bring as many people as you can. Farmers are coming from all over this country. Miners, businessmen, workers, the unemployed, they're coming. Because the businessmen are going to bring them. And I thank God for businessmen. I want you to write that down too. I'm a preacher. Of course I'm a preacher. That's all I do nowadays. But I want to tell you that not one of the disciples was a priest. They were all working men. God uses men that put their shoulder to the wheel. Every single time that we've organized an event, and I'm talking about mighty men, I'm talking about every event, but mostly it's time. It's being businessmen. Men in the street that have organized it. Obviously the church has got to support, and the churches do. But the initiative comes from the man in the street. So I just want to say to you that the people are going to come. As we say in Zulu, no makanja. They come in, come what may. Why? Because there's no other hope. You'll see. And I trust that you'll be there on that day. Are there any other questions? No, Janine, I don't want a question from you. I don't want, I'll speak to you tomorrow morning. Yes, yes, sir. Um, on Fox News this morning, they were broadcasting Donald Trump has now got involved in spreading this negative or the news about South Africa. Is there a plan to get some international media exposure on this? More yes. Just within South Africa, because we need to tell the world that the Christians in South Africa are standing up. Thank you, sir. To what's happening. Good question. I think Hardis can answer that question. Uh, sorry, about Mr. international Mr. coverage of this event. Because it's gonna, we've got Americans that are, that are actually praying now, strategic Americans and English from uh, Yorkshire wanting to come across to, cover, to, to see this themselves. This will go worldwide anyway. Because, you see, what I tried to explain to you, sir, earlier on was, Billy Graham never had a cell phone. He never had Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, he never had any of that. So he would send his men over here two years ahead to prepare for something like, say, Loftus Festival. We, because of you, can touch this whole nation as you walk out this door. Because they're waiting to hear what you're going to say. And that's what's going to happen. It's going to spread right viral. We've got on Facebook, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm just telling you what we've got, because you need to know. We've got, uh, George, was it? 527,000, is it, friends? About that. Okay. Okay. All of them will know about this straight after this meeting, or the whole lot. That's half a million. And those half a million have got a, quite a few million friends, and that's how it works. That's why I'm very respectful, and I really do love the press, unlike the other guy. I really do, and I'm looking to you to make it work. I don't think there's another country in the world that's so open to the gospel. I see the Pope, and don't write this, I just saw it in the news last night, I see the Pope's going to visit Ireland, I love Ireland, I preach in Ireland a lot, and there's chaos in Ireland. There's chaos, Catholic Church is in a shambles. We're not talking church, we're talking Jesus. And we are talking South Africa. This is a South African initiative. It's been instigated by South Africans, for South Africans, by South Africans. This is a South African event. And sir, it will. You're quite right, right. That's a good point. It will go worldwide. Because I tell you what, even the Americans have never seen a prayer meeting. We had more people in Bloemfontein, and you can write that, than Donald Trump had, his, had at his inauguration at the war. That's a fact. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Are you getting excited? <laughs> you could have fooled me. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes, madam. I'm Esti Mariansen from Arula Media. Um, I guess I want to know from your side, how can we prepare for this meeting? Good question. That's a very good question. Marula. <laughs> what we can do, now this is not jokes, we can start praying. And I know Janine's going to do that. And you're going to do it on, on, on Crude FM. <coughs> we can start praying. Benny Mostert, I'm going to see him just now. He's got a game plan. So is Elsa Mayer. Game plans about how we're going to start praying before the event. So what we do is, we, you see, the event is only one stepping stone. The event lasts for one day. Then after that, life goes on. Okay. So thank you for that question. What you can do is to start to encourage the people to pray. pray. My wife is praying for us as I speak to you now. Tommy... Uh, it wasn't Tommy. Um, there's another, John Rose. Maybe some of you know him, some of you don't. His wife can't come because she's in an intercession meeting right now. Okay? 
the Chief Justice of South Africa is my friend. This initiative is 100% behind it. Okay? Okay? Mangusuntu Butelezi is the oldest politician in the history of South Africa. He's behind us. 100%. And I'm just using two names. There's not a politician that will stand against this initiative. Because when you stand against God, you lose. And any man that mocks God is doomed. You can put that in your paper too. Any man. History will tell you, right from Pharaoh, right through to the British. Any man that stands against God is doomed. This, this, this prayer meeting is all about Jesus Christ. It's not about a big preach. We're going to pray individually. We're going to pray corporately. And then God's going to move. And you'll see that. And you'll remember what I'm telling you. And you'll say, Hey, what? Yeah. I don't tell lies. I don't have to tell lies. I'm telling the truth. God told me to come and do it. Why would I want to do this anyway? Huh? What is it in it for me? Personally, nothing. But for God and for this, I love this country. Don't you love this country? I love this country. You know what? I, I want you to write this down. You know, I travel all over the world, okay? I can go to Australia, I can go to New Zealand, I can go to Brazil, right? I can go to Ireland, Scotland, England. They try to keep me out of Scotland, but anyway, that's another story. That's where we come from. Anyway, and England, you know something? I meet South Africans there. Black, white, colored Indian. Unanimously. By the time I finished preaching, they're crying. They want to come home. But they can't come home. Because when they left, they burnt their bridges. All their money is finished. Now, I'm not saying... This is now very important because otherwise you're going to write something that's not true. I'm not saying that you mustn't leave this country. What I'm saying is you don't leave this country unless God has specifically told you to leave this country. Okay? Because if you say, well, I want to go to another country where there's peace and quiet, no, because the trouble is inside you. Yeah. See, that's where the trouble is. It's here. Trouble's not in the country. It's in you. See? Jesus is going to bring peace at this prayer meeting like you can't believe. People are going to be healed. Ladies are going to fall pregnant. You say, Could you? I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you. It's amazing. Relationships. One person said to me, he, said, he saw a couple coming out. They were, weren't talking to each other. He was watching. And he was praising to God. By the end, they were in each other's arms. Kissing each other and loving each other. Why? Because the Holy Spirit brings people together. You see, he commands a blessing. Write that down. When, when the children of God dwell together. Psalm 133. See, he commands a blessing. That's why it's corporate prayer. Okay. Anybody else? All right, we have to wrap this up in five minutes' time. So if there's some serious questions still, please um, go gladly if you will. Just a couple of practical things. Because I think from a practical point of view, there's going to be a lot of questions. There's no doubt, back to your um, question, Anthony, the whole world will be talking about not just the event, but what is happening in this country. That's right. And that's a huge opportunity for the Christians of this, this nation to rise up mm. and show the example in a crisis like mm. this. In the time of crisis, we turn to God. That's it. We don't turn to violence and we don't turn to, to people. We don't turn to man, we turn to God. And that's what this thing is all about. So from a practical point of view, there will be a lot of questions. And I know that. What we are trying to do and how we're going to manage the communication flow is to direct everybody to the Angus Buckingham website. Um, not to build a platform or anything, but to have one standard communications flow. In the past, we've learned that there's many people that put up websites each time this and each time that. That's not going to be from Shalom. So the only platform where there will be legit information will be on www.angusbuckingham.co.za. After this meeting, you will get a link to um, press releases and video content. We've got a great video to show as well uh, that um, George compiled that um, we will send to all of you that you can use as content to influence your constituency. Because it's important now that we will unite as media to get people to this event. Because this is how we can save this nation. Amen. So we will give you the tools for that. 
And from our side, we want to th say thank you that we can really unite as a people. Use the tools that God has put in your hand to get this message across. A message of hope, because what we know that there is hope. Otherwise, why are we here? There is definitely this hope. Mm. So all the information will be on angusbuckland.co.za. And then from another practical point of view, I know these people who are come from afar, they want to camp there, and I believe there will be sites like that as well. Andy, maybe you can just touch on that. Yeah, there, there will definitely be opening camping. I think from the Thursday night, there will be people wanting to, to come through. Um, so yeah, Thursday, Friday night, but we'll, we'll get that information through to you. I think just um, in terms of your, um, just coming back to your, your question, what, what do you want to do in this uh, its time event too, is you want to take South Africa along the journey with us. And so we'll be feeding back the, the information, that, um, the challenges that we've got, and as we're walking this journey, um, so that will also give you a bit of insight as to what you need to be praying for and where you can actively get involved. You know, to, 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 to <coughs> Helpers that we're looking for, there, there may be volunteers, there, there may be <coughs> toilets you're looking for, you might know someone who's, who's got toilets, and so you can actively get involved by, by posting something or phoning somebody and saying, I know somebody who can help me. So we want to take South Africa along with us on, on this journey. So keep going back to that website that I just spoke about, and um, yeah, keep, keep praying and keep hearing what, what God. God wants us to do. Yeah, we, we, you know, when it comes to budget, <laughs> we've got no budget. We've never had a budget. No, that's honest truth. And God, because, as Andy said, this is, a, this is a South African thing. This is, you must take ownership of this. I really mean that. This is your primitive. All we've been asked to do by the Lord is to blow the trumpet. You have to make it happen. We can't make it happen. It's too big. Okay? And that's what's happened in the last two It's Time events. And please, we encourage you to encourage the people to get involved. You know, what do they say? In order for evil to abound, all that good people have to do is nothing. It's true. So, so we, 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 thank you for reminding me of that on any. I just, what we need is we need participation. You know, I look at Kum Books, and you know, they're very good friends of mine, and they've been very gracious to me with, with my material. We need to get involved, sir. All your bookshops, for example. Either you're in or you're out. And I know you're in. That's why you're here this morning. We need to speak about these things. Huh? We need to tell the world. You know? How can we help? So you know how we can help. We can help. We've got to make this work. And we've got eight weeks from now. From now. Look at the schools. Huh? Look what, what is happening in the schools. The universities. They need to be there. They will see with their eyes what God can do. That they won't maybe see in their local church because of the enormity and the magnitude of the different race groups coming together as one people, one nation. It's going to happen. There's no chairs. You bring your own chairs or you sit on the grass. This is a God thing. Somebody sent me a scripture the other day and said, you know that uh, John the Baptist was a great uh, evangelist. And you know what he did? He called the people out of the cities into the country. Out of the cities, into the bush, John the Baptist. Tens of thousands. What are we doing? It's just a coincidence, eh? We're doing exactly that. We're calling the people out of the city into that country because the city can't accommodate an event of this magnitude. We've been to Loftus, man. Come on, some of you were there, maybe. We're not going back to Loftus. We're going to the bush. I want to see, like... A million blacks and a million whites. That would be nice, a nice starter. That's two million, by the way. That's what I want to see. I'm not joking. I'm not even laughing. Because anything less is not good enough. And I'll tell you what, everybody, not just South Africa, the whole continent of Africa will sit up and take note. Because they already know about it. Thanks to the TV channels, they know about it. I was in Ethiopia a couple of months ago. They know about it. It's a small world, sir. Very small world. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Stop me talking, please, because I've got another meeting. <laughs> All right. So um, thank you very much for coming. We are off to um, the Moreta Park Church at the moment. There's uh, all the leaders of, the Christian leaders of, of this, not just the city, but of the Gauteng region. There's a lot of them, a few, a couple of hundreds, I think up to a thousand maybe, that um, 
who is willing to participate in this move of God. So we're going to brief them now. Mag is going to share his heart and vision with them. <coughs> and we're also going to be talking to the practical side to it. But I think for us as media, it's crucial that we really get behind this thing. Because it's not about a man. Amen. It's about what God wants to do for this nation. Amen. And uh, we all are fully aware of what's happening here in this nation. And this is the biggest opportunity of our lifetime to show what God can do. That's right. Thank you very much. We appreciate it for coming out.